In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Welcome to another episode in the Discovering Orthodoxy series. And today I want us to consider what is prayer. I'm a priest of the British Orthodox Church within the Coptic Orthodox Patriarchate. And in our mission, as far as possible, we try to encourage those who are seeking orthodoxy to experience our life of prayer as much and as soon as possible. Not only in attending the liturgy, which we celebrate in our English language, but by praying the Agbeah as much as they can, also in our English language. It seems to me that our orthodox faith is impossible to imagine without a life of prayer. And teaching those who wish to experience orthodoxy to pray is a necessary and important part of our mission. Many of those who struggle to understand orthodoxy are those who have not experienced God in the life of prayer. And so even within our own churches, we must continually return to the idea of teaching people how to pray. Let me read from St John Chrysostom. He says, He who is able to pray correctly, even if he is the poorest of all people, is essentially the richest. And he who does not know how to pray properly is the poorest of all, even if he sits on a royal throne. Prayer really does matter to the Christian life. It is not enough to attend services. It is not enough to do good if we do not have a living relationship with God in Christ through the Holy Spirit, which is expressed in our life of prayer, then we have hardly begin, begun to experience orthodoxy at all. But are we just expected to know how to pray? In my own experience as someone coming from an evangelical background, I grew up with no one teaching me how to pray. Every day I knew I was expected to read a portion of the Bible and spend time in prayer. But for many of us, and myself included, we did not know what this meant. We did not know what we were trying to achieve. And so for many years, myself and others struggled to understand what we were supposed to be doing and what we should be expecting from God. But our Lord in the New Testament is found answering the question that the apostles posed to him. How should we pray? And the fact that our Lord did not send them away seems to me to suggest that in fact prayer is something that we can learn and prayer is something that can be taught. You will remember in the Gospels that when the disciples asked Jesus, how can we pray? He taught them the Lord's Prayer. And so it seems to me that if we can learn to pray, then we can improve in our prayer. And if we can improve in our prayer, then we can expect to see greater fruitfulness in our prayer. It might be possible to be filled with zeal and yet not know how to pray. And this was certainly my experience for many years of my adult Christian life. As an evangelical, I was filled with a great desire to be of service to God, and I was very busy in many different activities. I certainly tried to pray as best I could, but I have to say that over those years, I did not make very much spiritual progress because I had not been taught how to pray. To learn to pray is to build an inner place of worship in the heart. And if we are to build this temple or church in our heart, then we must learn how to build so that the foundations are set solidly and so that we are able to build course upon course of bricks in a straight and true direction so that our house will be solid. We may remember the parable of the builders, one who built on sand and one who built on rock. If we are to construct this place of prayer in our hearts, we must be like those who build this house on rock. And yet for many of us, the house is built on sand, the sands of emotion and ignorance, the sands of a lack of experience. We must learn from the great fathers of our church how it is that we are to pray, and then we will discover that our lives are able to build fruit. In the English language, the word prayer is used in several different ways. In the first place, of course, a prayer is the words we find written down or that we know by heart. The Lord's Prayer is a set of words that begins, Our Father which art in heaven. And our Agbeah is filled with many other prayers, and the prayer books of many other different Christians of different traditions are also collections of similar useful words. But we know that if we were to buy all of the prayer books in the world and have them stored in our libraries, 
that would not mean that we were people who were praying. Merely having access to the words themselves is not prayer. We know that prayer must also be put into practice. And in such a case, it is not a noun, it is not a thing, but it is a verb, it is something we do. And when we wake in the morning, we often find ourselves praying, using some of the words of the prayers that we find in our books. It is a good thing to begin putting the words we have in our hands into practice in our hearts. Such is how a personal relationship with God is built. But there is another stage that we should aspire to, because it is possible to wake in the morning and offer some words to God without really having a relationship with him, and to return again in the evening and say some more words and find them also merely an empty routine. We must finally become people who are prayers ourselves, prayers that is, people whose habitual activity is to be standing in the presence of God. And this is the end or the goal of our Christian life. It is much more than praying quite often. It is to have our attention habitually focused on God. We know that this is possible because if we have a toothache, we can think of nothing else but the pain we are enduring. If we have some presentation we have to present at work, we can often think of nothing else for days and weeks beforehand. And so it seems to me quite possible that we may train ourselves, if we follow the instructions of our church and of the spiritual fathers, to be always aware of the presence of God as far as he gives us grace. I can think of Brother Lawrence. He was a Roman Catholic monk who lived in the 17th century. And he had learnt what the fathers of our own Egyptian desert had taught. His job was to care for the kitchens in his monastery, and much of his time was spent washing the dishes. Often he was unable to attend the liturgy and the services which were going on in the great church. But he found that washing the dishes, he could still find himself in the presence of God. And he experienced such a desire to be with God that he always found his attention drawn towards God. And so he was not one who had books of prayers, not even one who occasionally prayed through the day, but one who had become a prayer himself. If we look at the Lord's Prayer, which is found in Matthew's Gospel, we discover that it comes just after the Sermon on the Mount. And in the Sermon on the Mount, we will remember that Jesus is teaching us many things about what sort of people we should be. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It seems to me that our Lord is wanting us to understand that how we pray is attached to how we live. And in the Gospel of Luke, we find that just before the same teaching on the Lord's Prayer, we have the account of our Lord visiting the house of Mary and Martha. And there we learn that Mary is the one who is commended because she sits at our Lord's feet while Martha is busy with many worthy things. Of course, there are many things in our lives that are important and need to be taken care of. But our Lord Jesus says of Mary that she had chosen the better part by sitting at his feet in quiet attention. And so in both these passages, it seems to me that we learn that prayer and the way we live our lives are connected. We cannot help being men and women of prayer if our lives are not filled with the life of Christ and if our lives are not filled with virtue and if we are not found often sitting quietly at the feet of Jesus. We cannot become men and women of prayer if all of our time and attention is filled up with the busyness of life. To want to pray is not about words. It is seeking to use these words as a means of entry into the presence of God. And this is what it means to pray in our orthodox understanding to seek an entry into God's presence, not only in the morning and evening, but throughout the day, to be people who are habitually in God's presence, to be people who have built a temple or a church or a place of worship in our heart where we meet God, Emmanuel, the one who is with us. It is not how many words we use, it is not how many services we attend, it is whether when we ask ourselves we are standing in the presence of God we can answer that yes, we are, 
and we find ourselves there in quiet glory and attention. This is what it is to pray. This is what it is to be men and women who are prayers and not people who only occasionally offer prayer. May it be such for all of us that we always find ourselves in God's presence and become that which we desire. To his glory and our salvation. Amen. Amen.